I actually was born the year Bruce Lee died. Yes, in 1973, Bruce Lee died. And as you know, Bruce Lee was one of the best of the best um, in terms of martial arts. He was uh, not only a Hollywood star and uh, overseas international star, if you would, but he was physically trained to do all of those moves. And um, he was educated in the religion, if you would, of martial arts. Brothers and sisters, I don't want to take up too much of your time, nor am I here uh, as a person who is so into martial arts that I can write a book. Okay, this is not what this is about. This is a general overview so that you can in turn do your own research. Because listen, I'm not, listen, I don't live with you. <laughs> okay, you grown, you on your own, you got kids probably, you know, grandkids, who knows? I don't know who directly I'm speaking to, but I know you are a human being and I know you have a soul and I know you have a God to answer to. So it is my duty, brothers and sisters, to tell you guys about the dangers of martial arts. And when I say religion, I'm talking specifically the fact that just like yoga, when you invoke these demons and when you are yoked up with these demonic spirits, it is similar in that Many of the people who are practicing in martial arts are looking for power. They are looking to become, especially when you get to higher rankings and higher levels, um, you see many of these people who are dedicated and call their senseis or masters. They call the, these people who are training the master. And the word of God says there's no master but God. God is the only master that you should be bowing down to, worshiping, and giving reverence and honor to. Only God Almighty. See, the word of God talks specifically about the fact that we wrestle not against flesh and blood. And tying into this martial arts, oftentimes people are so fixated on doing things that will what? Overpower somebody in the flesh. There are people out there, brothers and sisters, who practice this martial arts, start out thinking it's okay. They go to the local little dojo, if you would. You got a son that's a little bit uh, rambunctious. You want to, you know, how, how do you say, uh, cultivate that energy, that, that, that uh, hyperness, if you would. And you think this is a good thing. You think this is positive. You think this will structure him or her. So you take him to this place and uh, do little moves and you think it's great. But brothers and sisters, the person, the person who's running the show in that area, they are in connections and they oftentimes know a lot of deeper things than meets the eye. Oftentimes, a lot of them deal with necromancing. And if you don't know what necromancing is, brothers and sisters, necromancing basically is when you basically summon, call on, or try to get in contact with dead folks. You saw it in the movie. I saw the movie. I'm not going to hear front, front to you. I don't have to front to you. I saw the movie, um, the black Panther. I saw it once. And that's the only time I'm going to see it. Was I entertained? Absolutely. Did I see my people and say, wow, they look great. It's good that they united in the movie. All of that positive, good stuff. Uh, cinematography was on point. I'm not going to, you know, discredit, uh, the movie in that light. But brothers and sisters, when you get to the point where you (laughs) are a child of God and you are sensitive to the Holy Spirit, okay, you have to realize that it's more than meets the eyes. Anytime, brothers and sisters, when you have the Hollywood stamp on something, you got to question everything. I'm going to say it twice. Anytime when you have Holly Weird orchestrating a movie or an industry, you know that Satan has its hands, what, in the cookie jar. Okay, so let's talk very quickly, because I want to get back to martial arts. Let's talk very quickly about the movie, The Black Panther. First of all, first of all, think about the black, I'm not going to go through a play-by-play of each frame, because that'll take me way too long. But I'm going to give you a general overview. In the scenes of that movie, they dealt with necromancing. 
And if you remember when the guy almost died or whatever the case is, or he got stabbed or whatever the case is, they had a scene where it was all purple. It looked like the Garden of Eden. And I know you know what I'm talking about. And they were what calling on old, ancient African ancestors, right? Their father, the father's father, whatever the case was. And they were dialoguing with them as if they were alive. Now, anybody who is dead, your mother, your sister, your brother, your cousin, your auntie, your uncle, your little neighbor, the post office man, whoever died that you know. Okay. After they die, they're dead, brothers and sisters. They are not going to be, hear me very, very clearly. Hear me very, very, I want to break this down like you're two years old, okay? Because some people, it just flies right over their heads. And I have scripture for this, and you know I will leave it in the description box in terms of necromancing and how this is an abomination. When something is an abomination, that means that it's not only a sin, God hates that sin. It's beyond taboo. It's something that you don't even want to get near. Necromancing is an abomination in God's eyes. That means if you try to talk to, contact, Somebody who is dead, I don't care how influential they were in your life, you are crossing the line. So yeah, in that movie, that's why I don't want to see it anymore. And I won't, I don't care if it's on Netflix or whatever the case is. Okay. I'm not watching it anymore. Once was enough. Okay. Once was enough. They dealt with necromancy in that movie. It didn't sit well in my spirit. And if you are a child of God, a true child of God. That shouldn't sit well in your spirit too. Okay. He was conjuring up, calling these ancient ancestors and trying to get information, insight and knowledge and wisdom to proceed on to whatever he needed to do. Okay. And that's not what you need to do. It's an abomination. The dead is dead. The dead know nothing. When you are dead, your auntie, your uncle, whoever it is who passed away, they are dead. They're not going to be coming in your room and, you know, visiting you. Oh, no, Samantha, what are you talking about? I saw Cousin Pete in my dream. Well, I I saw my father in the spirit. The light was flickering and on his, um, uh, you know. (laughs) On his uh, deathbed, just right after he took his last breath. He said he would visit me. And sure enough, a week later, he visited me. Well, guess what, brothers and sisters? You was visited by the demon. That familiar spirit that was taking notes like a news reporter when that event happened. What am I saying? I'm saying God's word is true. And it says that the dead know nothing. That means that every time you think on Earl or whatever the case is, whoever is visiting you and leaving cookies, huh? For you to eat. They are demonic spirits, brothers and sisters manifesting as that person. Remember familiar spirits. That means demonic spirits that watch people each and every day. Like news reporters take notes on what you doing and who you doing. Hello, somebody. And they report that back to Satan. So that he gains leverage and he can keep you and bondage and trickery and persuasion. He gets a blueprint. Listen, if you got a blueprint on somebody else's life and you trying to do something ill will against them, you have leverage if you know what they're doing, right? Give me good. You'd be surprised how many so-called blood bought believers got their little sons and daughters practicing martial arts when they don't realize that these demonic spirits behind martial arts is that of the devil is that of the occult i am not playing games i believe that it's very important that i talk about this because even in mma i'm a type of person that i like boxing i'm keep it all the way real i think it's very um it's just something that i grew up with you know what i mean people boxed and you know what i mean my five three brothers you know what i mean my father we all love boxing we all like we all like boxing you know what i mean the greatest of the greatest boxers i pretty much knew a little bit about them okay and now you have the mixed martial arts and look at uh, look at look at the way a lot of these 
fighters look. They got all of these tattoos like crazy. They look demonic when they doing all of these blows and hits. And they look like they are possessed of the devil. See, don't just take things, brothers and sisters, as face value. Oh, it's just entertainment. No, these people are literally making packs with demonic spirits. So what? So that these ancient people that did martial arts back in the days, they summit. Just say, uh, let me give you a prime example. You got a son, right? And your son wanted to get into martial arts. He read up a little bit about Bruce Lee. He's fascinated by Bruce Lee. He got the little nunchucks. He got the little outfit. He's not only a white belt. He turns into a brown belt, then a black belt. He's like, he's doing his thing. Okay, once you get to different levels, just like secret societies, huh? You go to di different levels, different peers, different, different plateaus of martial arts. And then they got you trying other forms of martial arts. Jiu-jitsu and Taekwondo and this do and this that do whatever whatever do re me you know whatever right and then after that you're gonna be what to the point where you are trying to physically conjure up and make things what listen let me give you a prime example do you know that there's certain martial artists that can literally take matter. And they can conjure up so much, so much demonic energy that they could take matter and kind of make it into a matter of ball, like a ball energy thing. You see it in these movies. Come on now. You saw it in the Matrix. You see it in, a, in Eli. You see it. You see it in all of these highly weird movies. That's action packed. What they doing? They're not only shooting. They doing what? Martial arts. Martial arts moves. Every movie out there, even some of these music videos, martial arts is so prevalent. Why is martial arts so prevalent? Because it deals with two things. First of all, the yin and yang. If you ever see that symbol, the yin and yang, it's like basically like it's like a circle with a dot in the middle of it. It's two dots, one going up, one going down, right? It basically deals with you got a little bit of good and a little bit of evil and everything. But that's against God because God is all about good. There's no evil in God. Right. When you think of God Almighty, is there any evil in God? Absolutely not. God is perfect. God is pure. God is holy. God is not defiled. But see, but the devil, what the devil wants you to think and believe in your head is that, yeah, man, it's just not light without darkness and good with bad and good and evil. He wants to have you thinking about that duality all the days of your life so that you can question and say, wait a minute. There is a little bit of good in selling drugs because then little Johnny can have a sandwich. There is a little good in that prostitute selling her body because then she could keep the lights on. There is a little good with that hooker turned stripper on a pole because yet she could pay for her college tuition. There is little good in sin. No, the devil is a liar. You see how the devil tries to manipulate your mind and justify sin? Is God's way or no way? Let's get back to martial arts. I hope you are getting something out of this message, brothers and sisters. Martial arts derives from Hinduism and Buddhism and all of that nutball stuff, basically. Anytime that you have idol gods and you're worshiping other gods and you're summoning other demons and you're invoking different spirits and things of that nature so that you can get power over someone else, you are practicing the occult. Anytime you're trying to manipulate someone else, and to overpower something else and to use symbolism and ritualistic practices to your advantage, you are of the devil. You are on the devil's team. So, no, I'm not for martial arts. I know better now. We have to be wise, brothers and sisters. Just because it's entertainment does not mean that it's holy, huh? Just because it's something that's fascinated, magical, mystical, does not mean that it's from God. You might be a black belt. You better do your research.